In the gospel today, we hear that a leper came to Jesus, knelt down, and begged him, saying, If you wish, you can make me clean. A few months ago, I spoke with a woman who was exposed to COVID-19. She and most of her family had to go into quarantine. She said to me, For the first time in my life, I now understand what it feels like to be a leper. Since 2020, things like wearing masks, social distancing, and having to quarantine have made many of us feel like lepers. None of us like living this way. None of us like the feeling of being isolated. Like the man in the gospel, we want to be connected to God and each other, and also turn to Jesus for healing in our lives and in the world. It is interesting. When the leper asks to be healed, Jesus said, I will do it. Be made clean. Not only does Jesus say that he will do it, but also his motivation is revealed. Is his motivation money? No. If Jesus would have charged every leper to be healed, he would have made a fortune. Money is not his motivation. Is his motivation fame? No. He says, tell no one about this except the priests. Fame is not his motivation. Is his motivation power? No. After the healing, Jesus continued to go to deserted places to pray and to be connected to God the Father. Power is not his motivation. If money, fame, and power are not Jesus' motivations for healing the leper, what is then? The gospel clearly states that his motivation was pity. It says, moved with pity, he stretched out his hand, touched him, and said to him, I will do it, be made clean. The word pity here comes from the Greek, which literally means guts. This pity which moved Jesus is gut-wrenching. It is an intense compassion that comes from the deepest love of Jesus. Today, I am here with you asking for your support of the Catholic Ministries Annual Appeal. And let's take a moment to look at our motivation for supporting the appeal. The appeal supports the ministries and mission of our church here in the Diocese of Joliet. Specifically, it supports Catholic Charities, which serves over 44,000 people who are vulnerable and most in need throughout our diocese with services like daybreak shelter, mobile food pantries, counseling services, early childhood intervention, aging, disabilities, and more. The appeal supports the Catholic Schools Office, which ensures a strong Catholic education for over 15,000 students. The appeal supports seminary education. Currently, we are blessed with 29 seminarians who are studying to be priests. The appeal supports the Office of Family Ministry, which enriches, affirms, and nurtures hundreds of families each year. The appeal supports the Office of Hispanic and Ethnic Ministries, which engages over 300,000 Hispanic Catholics and brings life to our church. The appeal supports the Office of Youth Ministry and is able to guide, form, and mobilize over 25,000 young people into missionary discipleship. The motivation of this appeal is to support all of these ministries so that the light of Christ can continue to shine brightly in our lives and in the world. I think we can agree that we desire to belong to a church that is vibrant and alive, a church that prays and puts her faith into action, a church that passes on the faith and salvation of our Lord and Savior on to the next generation. Since March, many of our donations to our parishes, to our ministries, and to our diocese have decreased, while the needs have continued to increase. If you are able, if you are in the financial position to contribute to this appeal, I hope that you may be moved with pity. Or in other words, I hope that you might be motivated with intense compassion and love to generously donate 
and perhaps even increase your annual appeal or pledge. If because of circumstances you are not able to increase your donation or contribute to the annual appeal this year, please be assured of my prayers for you and for your needs. Speaking of prayer, when I was installed as your new bishop in September, the very first letter I sent out to parishioners was one asking you to send me your prayer intentions. And I received thousands of those prayer requests back from you. I sat every day before the Eucharistic Lord during the month of November and read your intentions and prayed for you. Please join me in praying for the success of the Catholic Ministry's annual appeal and know that I will pray for you and for all of your intentions so that together we can be a church that reflects and shines the light of Christ. For if we are going to be a people of God, if we are going to be a church that is thriving, faithful, and generous, it begins with prayer and is followed with action. In advance, thank you. Thank you for all of your generosity and support, and may God bless you always. <laughs>